Why does Scotland have a crack in the middle? What caused it? This is the Great Glen Fault, and you can see it's a directly straight line. It goes through Scotland, but it also goes through Ireland. This is the Great Glen Fault. It's a long straight slip fault running through its namesake, the Great Glen in Scotland. And the fault is most inactive today, mostly inactive, but occasionally modern tremors have been recorded over the past 150 years. The Great Glen Fault extends further southward in a straight line through Loch Linne and Firth of Lorne. There's a lot of locks there, and as you can see in the map, it goes through Northern Ireland as well, extending there directly through Low Swilly. Don Negal Bay and Clue Bay as Linen Fault. The Northeast Fault connects to Walls Boundary associated with Melby Fault. The history of the Glen Fault, its long movement history, it formed towards the end of the Caledonian Orogeny associated with a collision between North America, what we used to call Laurentia, and the Baltic, which is the Baltic of today. These tectonic plates at the end of the Silurian Early Devonian, likely around 430 million to 390 million years ago. The movement at that time was sinistral, left lateral, and the same as closely related set of faults, sub parallel to the main part of the Great Glen Fault, including the Strathconan Fault. Now, the exact timing is uncertain, but associated faults within the Devonian are cut by members of the late Carboniferous Early Permian. Dyke Swarm, the Great Glen Fault had its final phase of movement during the late Cretaceous to early Tertiary. Cretaceous is about. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Cretaceous about 145 to 66 million years ago. As we know, 66 million years ago is when we had the dinosaur uh, asteroid comet impact. Now, the fault is mostly inactive today, but occasionally modern tremors have been recorded over the past 150 years, which meant that seismic buffers are built into the Kessock Bridge, carrying a, an A9 road of the Inverness. Fortunately, none of the modern day infrastructure has been affected by these tremors at the latest one, as the latest one to affect Inverness and the surrounding area occurred September 1901 with a five magnitude earthquake. In the 19th century, a boat canal known as the Caledonian Canal was dug through the Great Glen and the canal is still used today. So what is a glen? Well, it's a term used in Scotland and Ireland for a valley. That's a very long and deep valley, often subjected to significant glacial erosion. Scotland has over 40 glens, and between them, they expose some of the oldest rocks in Europe. Scotland has a long, fascinating geological history, starting off with Southern Hemisphere as parts of ancient continental Laurentia, and has since journeyed across the globe and its earliest rocks date back 3 billion years in the form of the Loisian Nice. Scotland, famous for its scenery, it also has, uh, Northern Scotland also has a supervolcano, famous for its scenery, which is in no small part due to this tumultuous geological history, and the glens are renowned through the world for their breathtaking beauty. Glencoe, one of the most dramatic, and then we have... Uh, Origins of rocks posed many problems for early geologists, such as Robert Jameson and John McCullough, who visited in the 1800s. The fact that, in fact, the geology was not fully understood until Sir Edward Bailey worked in the early 1900s. Its formation takes us back to 470 to 460 million years ago, during the Caledonian mountain building period, when the ancient continents Laurentia and Baltica and Avalonia collided.
40 to 50 million years later, there was a period of intense volcanic activity. And as the eruption raged on, the expelled magma left behind the void. This resulted in a slow collapse of the volcano and the formation of a caldera, which eventually extended to eight kilometers in diameter. In the latter stages of the volcanic activity, magma intruded into the series of faults around the caldera, forming the ring intrusions we see today. And this long period of volcanic activity was interspersed with quieter periods where deposition of sediments occurred, resulting in the interspersed sediments and volcanics we see today. The Great Glen truly lives up to its name. The Glen that is over 100 kilometers long, running all the way from Inverness to Fort William. It's even visible from space, and it cuts the Scottish Highlands in two. It's also home to the deepest freshwater lake, the Loch Ness, not to mention a certain legendary Loch Ness monster. Now, the Great Glen Fault, the size of a massive strike sub fault, that can be traced as far as Ireland to the west and the Shetland Islands to the northeast. It also forms the boundary between the Grampian Highlands and the southeast and northern highlands in the north. The fault has a complex history thought to have involved several stages of movement, beginning as sinistral, which is left lateral movement, and switching to dextral right lateral movement later on in history. Its total slip distance is thought to be in the region of 100 kilometers. It was last active during Lake Cretaceous, early tertiary. Subsequent erosion along the fault zone during Quaternary formed a series of locks, as we said, including famous Loch Ness. And then you have the tilt, the Glen Tilt. The Glen Tilt is found in the north of Perthshire, has been long a site of uh, geological interest. The river Tilt, which runs through the glen, follows a geological fault for most of its length through the glen, and the river tumbles over a series of igneous dikes formed when the lava forced its way into the fault side cracks. That was also one of the sites that led to James Hutton's forming the theory of Plutonism. Okay, so that's the glen uh, crack. The glen... Uh, Crack, the Scottish Glen, the Great Glen Fault, and that's why we have this tremendously clear line, straight line, right across Scotland. For those of you who love geology, as I do, and anthropology, and uh, whatever, Earth history, an amazing fact that half the northern half of Scotland, the top half of this fault was part of North America, and the other part was part of uh, Europe, and they came crashing together, forming this type of a fault. Uh, this is from Wikipedia and other um, uh, geology uh, sites. Leave, please leave your comments, and thank you for your support.